During the span of man's evolution, time has been measured by the journey of our planet through the darkness of space. Scientists use our solar system and the cold, vast regions of the universe as a giant timekeeper. Time has a quality as hazy and distant as the perimeter of our own galaxy. The haze occasionally clears for those minds which inquire into the very nature of the fabric of time itself. And a glimpse of the true meaning of time is revealed. Time, from creation to now, tugs toward all yesterdays almost as strongly as the unborn tomorrows that stretch toward all eternity. Someday, man will strike a balance between these two great universal forces, the past and the future. And then will man make a fantastic journey to the center of time. Mr. Stanton, Jr., and Mr. Denning, here for a top priority conference? Yes, sir. Your route is cleared through to the time vault. Denning, how long does my father have to be dead before you bury him? I don't understand. Am I or am I not in full control of Stanton Industries? Why, of course. Then we'll drop the junior. 
I'm the only Stanton in Stanton Industries now. Take, computer, tapes, all go. Laser beam pulse system, go. Photosensitives, go. Time selectors set at present. All set, Dave. Stand by for time synchronization. Check time transport system functioning properly. Date, 6-8-68. Time, 11 hours, 20 minutes. Five. Four, three, two, one. Mark. Marked. Date 6868, time 11 hours, 20 minutes. Countdown checks out okay, Mark. Time synchronization 100. I'm standing by for basic systems check run. Ready. Switch on. Switch on. Stand by to activate image stabilizer switch. Reception 100. All systems go. Time selector accuracy, 100. Stand by, Dave. Here we go. OK. See you day before yesterday. I'm going to set the time selector at minus 24 hours. Final countdown. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Date, 5868. Time, 11 hours, 20 minutes. And standing by. Hey, it worked great. Time transport, all go. All go. All go. Accuracy, 100. Now I'm setting the time selector at zero minus 48 hours. More basic power input. Basic power systems are pulling maximum power now. Check laser beam cycling. Flash pulse indicator is up to maximum. Laser beam cycling is up too. We're not getting enough power for the time transport. Check photon cycling. I'm sorry, Mark. Photon cycling's up there too. You've got all the external power coming into the lab now. I can't give you any more. Wait a minute. The internal power supply in your lab. Your auxiliary standby. My meters show a, a power shut off there. Doc, why don't you try opening it up and see what happens? Very well, we'll try it. Mark, the time selector. Cut it back. as well shut down. I'm sorry. We weren't ready for that much power. Don't blame yourself, Mark. I agreed to take a chance. Zero minus 24 hours. Always 24 hours. We'll get there yet, Mark. We've been at this almost two years already, and we've still never gotten further back than 24 hours. And that's only phase A. What about phase B? Remember what Edison said. At least we know 700 ways that won't work. Nothing worth doing is done easily. Was there any damage, Karen? Nothing serious. The circuit breakers all worked. Oh. Mark? Something's burned out. It looks like one of the time selector circuits. Nothing drastic. But that takes care of our demonstration very nicely. Good heavens, I'd forgotten all about that. Well, if I know Stanton Jr. and his one-man committee to, quote, investigate and evaluate existing research projects to determine future appropriations, unquote, he hasn't forgotten. And he and his 
sharp little blue pencil are due here any minute. Doctors Manning, Gordon, and White, please report to main conference room. Mr. Stanton has arrived with Mr. Denny. How's that for a cue? It'll do. Let us go. Gordon, you know Mr. Stanton. He's very eager to learn more about this project of yours. Mr. Stanton, Mr. Denny, my colleague. Miss White, Dr. Manning. Gordon, Gordon, Gordon. Oh, yes, Gordon. Yes, Dr. Gordon, I believe my father granted you the largest appropriation of any research project of last year. Fourteen million dollars. Uh, to be exact, it was, um, oh yes, thirteen million seven hundred and ninety-four thousand five hundred and twenty dollars and twelve cents. Why? We're working on a project which is entirely new, Mr. Stanton. That means new types of equipment, new techniques, much experimentation. Why, Dr. Gordon? What makes your project so important? Perhaps this might interest you, Mr. Denning. This is what really started Dr. Gordon on the project. Why, it looks like an old newspaper clipping. It is. Uh, may I? Well, don't keep it to yourself, Mr. Stanton. Let me in on it. All right, Washington, D.C., November 27th. An announcement has been made concerning an airborne eye that sees the past as well as the present. What this particular instrument accomplishes is this. Operating from a height of some 40,000 feet in space, the eye looks down and reflects moving images of people and objects not then present, but uh, that were there on the previous day. But that's impossible. Uh, developed by the Department of Defense and used to gather information on missile bases in Cuba, the TV lag eye somehow picks up reflections of activity and things from some time before, referring them to an observation screen. For instance, the uh, eye may pass over an empty parking lot to capture pictures of the spot when it was filled with cars during the day. You photographed the past? Well, that's substantially correct. Well, I don't know, but taking pictures of a parking lot the way it appeared a few days previous, well, it strikes me as the height of useless occupation. Hardly worth almost $14 million. As useless as raising a crop of mold on old bread? Yes, if you like. That's probably exactly what they told Fleming before he called his mold penicillin. Now, see here, Manning. Gentlemen, gentlemen, please, why don't we all sit down and let Dr. Gordon explain how this multi-million dollar gizmo of his works? Certainly, I'd be glad to. Our experiments here are an extension of one of the fundamentals of Einstein's theory of relativity, the curved universe. Theories, Dr. Gordon, only theories. Proven, Mr. Stanton, proven. Huh. We know that there is a definite relationship, and a peculiar one, between time and the three dimensions of space. Time may therefore be considered a fourth dimension. I'm afraid I don't follow you, Dr. Gordon. Now, take this booklet. It may be set to exist in space in three dimensions. Length, width, and height. Of course. Ah, but it wasn't always like that. Before it took that shape, it existed as uh, paper, as uh, wood pulp. And at any time, it may change its dimension. So, oh, it still exists. But its three-dimensional description is no longer valid except for a certain period of time. Time is therefore a necessary fourth dimension. Yes. In fact, I every think... object, every object from this booklet to the entire universe may be set to exist in what the scientists call the space-time continuum. Doctor, may we come back to just what contribution you have made to this matter, please? Certainly. All right. Have you had any success ever with any of your experiments? Yes, partial success. We've been able to go back in time 24 hours. 24 hours. In other words, you and uh, Manning here have been just duplicating uh, scientific experiments that have been tried and discarded before. Not at all. We're working with an entirely different principle. Well, Dr. Manning? Instead of the infrared beam principle used in the early experiments, our system is based on a laser beam. Laser beam? It stands for light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. Oh, I see. It's a one-color coherent light beam, which is extremely selective. It doesn't spread like ordinary light. The rays stay parallel. A laser beam is like one perfect note from the virtuoso's violin. 
While ordinary light is like the noise from a practicing high school band, it's... May we dispense with your lyrical classroom lecture and get down to the facts, please? Now, I still don't know what it is you gentlemen are trying to do, if you'll excuse my ignorance. If it's all right with you, it's all right with me. Gentlemen. Gentlemen. Uh, so you think you can take a peek at the good old days, eh, with this laser beam system of yours, Doctor? Yes. The past, of course, still exists. Oh? Suppose a scientist on a planet some 50 light years from here were observing Earth. He would at this moment be looking at light rays that left this Earth 50 years ago. He might very well be watching the First World War. In effect, some full 50 years of history would be contained in those beams traveling to that distant planet. That's quite an idea. It's more than an idea, Mr. Denning. It's fact. And since space-time is a continuum, the present is only a point moving constantly along that continuum. When you put it like that, Doctor, even I can understand it. Theoretically, with our equipment, we should be able to cut in anywhere along that continuum. Actually, journey to the center of time. And why haven't you been able to get beyond the 24-hour mark? Well, that's a question to which we haven't found the answer yet. Now, Doctor, I understand that you refer to this uh, watching the past as phase A of your project. Yes. And that phase B is really the important aspect of it. That's correct. Would you mind telling me just what is phase B? Looking into the future. Oh, really? Looking into the future, huh? <laughs> now, despite all the trouble you've had looking into the past, you still think you can succeed in this uh, scheme? We do. And for what purpose, may I ask? We are on the threshold of space travel, Mr. Stanton. Actually traveling to other planets. Our existing predictor instruments are not adequate. Predictor instruments, Doctor? Instruments that are used in jets, rockets, spacecraft. They give predictive information about the future. Look into the future, as it were. But their capacity is measured only in seconds. Now we need to look ahead hours, days, even weeks. Fascinating, Dr. Gordon. Absolutely fascinating. Yes, it's all very interesting, Doctor, but I must say it's also, also very, very far-fetched. Doctor, are you prepared to uh, demonstrate this uh, looking into the future for us now? No, not quite yet. <laughs> no, I thought not. Well, gentlemen, I'll take into consideration your request for funds, but I'll have to warn you. If you don't come up with anything more concrete within 24 hours, I'll be forced to shut down this section and convert it to weapons development. Good day. Doctor? Young Stanton isn't quite like his father. He hates to put the family money into anything that isn't going up. And why doesn't he put it all into taxes? That's the only thing sure at all. You shouldn't antagonize the man, Mark. He's a papa's fool. Uh, we know that empty vessels make the most noise, but well, unfortunately, we're dependent on this one. We wondered where you disappeared to. Just getting a little fresh air. Boring won't do any good. I guess not. It's such a lovely evening. The mountains look so much softer in the moonlight. Yeah. Doesn't get to you at all, does it? What? All this. What would you like? A serenade? Poetry? Why not? All right, I can be poetic. Let's see. Uh, a lady of science named White could travel much faster than light. Took off one day in a relative way and returned on the previous night. <laughs> you nut. You know, you're actually... You're actually quite pretty for a girl. Well, you're not entirely impossible yourself. It's even a full moon. Perfect setting for romance. It's a shame for it to go to waste. 
What do you say? Good morning, Mr. Denny. How are you this morning? Well, I'm not so sure after getting caught in that rainstorm last night. Here today for the test? Oh, yes, yes. I'm looking forward to it. It should be very interesting. Yeah, we were just discussing that. Mr. Stanton come in yet? I saw him in the hall a little while ago. He's on his way down to the time vault. I think he's going to watch the test from there. Oh? Well, I won't be in the way if I watch it from here, will I? Oh, no, not at all. Dr. Gordon just told monitoring to stand by. I think they're ready for countdown. Oh, I'd better get a move on then. See you later, Mr. Denning. Right, Dave. I've changed the settings gradually, so I'm sure the circuits are all ready. Right. Stay with it for a while, Dave. We're running a check. No hurry. I've got all the time in the world. Past, present, and future. Don't worry about a thing. I'm going to run a computer check for myself. Oh, by the way, maintenance replaced the burnout circuits last night, so uh, everything should be A-OK. -okay. Got the image stabilizer. Switch is off. Stand by. Setting minus one. Setting minus two. Standing by for exterior systems check run. Okay, then what are we waiting for? Phase B. Okay, phase B it is. Resetting time selector and starting recheck on countdown. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Marked. Time synchronization 100. It's all yours, Doc. Take her away. I set the time selected zero plus 24 hours towards the future. Time selector set. Stand by to activate time transport circuits. Standing by. Transport system indicators, no go. How's it for you in there? Negative. I'm going to increase the power input. Stay with the overload indicator. I'll only take it to maximum capacity. There's only 
one other thing we can try. Accelerate the laser beam cycling. Mark, we've never subjected the unit to such speed. It's a risk. I say take it. Now, wait a minute, Manning. You have no authority to make a decision as rash as that. Dr. Gordon is in charge of this project, not you. It may shatter the laser's ruby, Mark. Or it may not. If it does, we're out of business. But if we don't get this damn thing working, we're out of business anyway. Very well, we'll try it. Flash pulse indicator. No way of telling what our cycle speed is. Better decelerate. No. Wait, it could be the time transport calibrations. They may be off. Try moving the transport ahead. Transport circuits are completely fused. The time selector. What's the reading, Mark? Five thousand years. But that's impossible. In the future. much as you do. The lab just seemed to vanish. All right, we'll stand by, but hurry, please. What happened? Where's the lab going? I don't know. One minute, everything was operating properly. Dr. Gordon, Mark, and Karen were in the lab. Suddenly, there was a tremendous power surge. Oh, Mr. Stanton was in there when it happened. Mr. Stanton? Well, can't you do something? Bring them back. Are they in danger? You'd better try to establish contact with them wherever they went. Susan has a 
monitoring been able to establish a bearing on the lab? Negative. Monitoring tried to establish contact, but any attempt at communication with the lab has failed. Apparently, everything's been cut off from within their unit. Then that means they're really lost, doesn't it? No, not necessarily. They're still getting a faint but steady signal from their laser beam pulse system. Monitoring is attempting to trace that signal now. Trace it? To where? To whatever dimension in time or space they've traveled into. You mean they've traveled somewhere into time? Well, I follow you, but not very far. Well, you're familiar with the time-space continuum? I'm familiar with the theory. All right, then. Now, that lab is still inside the time vault, but somehow they've, they've transported themselves through some, some warp in the continuum. Monitoring has just completed their test data from the recorder into the computers. We should know very shortly how far and in what direction the lab has traveled. Well, then what do we do? Well, it's a wild chance, but before the overload, all our systems and circuits were synchronized with those in the lab. A central control is equipped to take over complete control of the lab in the event of any emergency, such as a power failure from within the lab. Monitoring reports that time synchronization to the lab was set, set on plus factor, phase B. They've traveled into the future. The future? How far? Well, there's no way of telling their exact time coordinates, but according to the laser beam, the lab has stopped moving. Quick, get engineering up here right away. I want all the plans of the time transport circuits inside that lab. The overload burned out certain vital circuits and apparently has created new ones. New ones that, that somehow, somehow we're going to have to duplicate here in our master control if we ever hope to bring them back. We've done it. The future. A window 5,000 years into the future. I almost wish we hadn't. Why do you say that? It's almost as if we've discovered the end of the world. We don't know that. Come, there's much to do. We've got to take note of every reading, record what fuses have been made, and what new connections have been made in the transport system. I don't know if those circuits are stable enough not to burn out. We better work fast. It won't be long at this cycling speed before the laser explodes. You know something? It looks like you could step right out into it. We're in the center of some sort of nuclear war. Doctor, get us out of here before we get killed. This is not a window into the future. This is real. The lab, we have been transported here physically. A time rift. A warp of the space-time continuum. That matter can pass through. Five thousand years in a matter of seconds. Come on, the condition will deteriorate suddenly. The readings, the new circuits, quickly. Mark the hatch. Do not be alarmed. We mean you no harm. We observed your craft as it appeared from nowhere. You'll please come with us. Oh, how do we know? But how do you know you'll be safe? You don't. But if you're found here, outside of our barrier, you will surely be destroyed. We must hurry. Come with us. We seem to have very little choice. Where are you taking us? To the council chambers within our starship, to Dr. Venus. Dr. Vina will be as interested in asking you questions as you are in having yours answered. Picking up a faint video signal from the lab, but it's... It's not strong enough for clear reception on the time screen. All right, let's see what we can pick up on the screen now. Monitoring, this is central control. Now, I've reprogrammed the time selector and transport circuits in our master control. I'm going to attempt to utilize the laser beam pulse system as a guide to pick up video image. Please stand by and record all phases of our first contact. All right, Susan, stand by to activate time screen. Standing by. All right. Screen activated. Image activated. 
Perception 100. Standing by. Susan, try advancing the time selector slowly forward. Just what do you hope to accomplish by all this, if I may ask? Well, we know they went forward into the future. It seems logical that if we can beam in on the lab's last position and slowly advance, we should be able to pick up their image. Negative so far. The vault's beginning to fade out. Keep trying, keep trying. Try changing the time coordinates. Still negative. I don't think it's going wait, to... Wait, wait, look. It's working. My God. Where are they? Lost if we don't act fast. We've got to take a chance. Try to bring them back before it's too late. Dave, we're drifting. I don't think we'll be able to hold them much longer. Just long enough to try to bring them back. We're losing them. Quick, lock in time synchronization. I can't. We're drifting. We've got to hold them. We may not get a second chance. But the circuits are unstable. Lock in is impossible. They're gone. We've lost them. Keep trying, Susan. We'll get them again. We've got to. There's, there's no telling where they are now. Possible explanations. Less than an hour ago, we were in our laboratory, in our own world. And now? You are still in your own world, Dr. Gordon. We are the aliens, not you. Aliens? I don't quite understand. Ours is a colonization ship. We come from a dead world, far beyond your galaxy. And we have been searching for a new world with an environment close to that of our own mother planet. This is still Earth. The year is 6968, but yours is a dying world. Dying? How? I wish I could tell you that the reason was natural, but I am afraid that it is man's own folly. Ours was an untimely arrival upon your planet. Regrettably, we've landed in the midst of a devastating global war. A war which will leave Earth dead and mankind annihilated. How do you plan to survive on an Earth that's dying? We don't. There is a creeping death all around us. We cannot stay. But where could you go? We must return to the stars, to another planetary system where Earth-like worlds exist. Breakthrough, breakthrough. Units 9 through 14 report to fuel depot sector 6. Units 1 to 9 report to repair. All other units are on Earth standby. All our efforts may be in vain. We're in a race, a race we may not win. A race? Attention, all personnel. Attack imminent. Massive troop movement reported outside barrier. It is only a matter of time before the large-scale assault may succeed. We must make the necessary repairs on our ship before that happens, or perish. Why? With all your resources, why don't you build stronger defenses? Our makeshift defenses are adequate to protect us for a while. But there is grave danger. If we cannot complete those repairs in time... Major breakthrough! Major breakthrough! Enemy has penetrated the barrier. Repeat, barrier penetrated. Enemy forces rapidly approaching. This is Council Control. Activate secondary force field. Repeat, activate secondary force field. You see, even with our advanced technology, we are not invulnerable. Man's atomic weapons are as primitive to us as as spears are to men. But even modern man can be killed by a spear. But if you're just here for repairs, as you say, why would they want to attack you? In hopes of procuring our weapons, our advanced technology. To them, it is a means to carry on their way of life, the waging of war. They've broken through. We shall not succeed. Our journey ends here. But you, you must return to the past, taking with you the fate of mankind. Fate of mankind? You must return to your own time. Tell them. Tell them. Yes, go on. Warn them. The laser weapon. They must control it. We have no laser weapon. You will have. It will leave your Earth a sterile, burned out slag in space. It will... My people will help you re-enter your time space warp. You must go with them. You must return to you. you...
Monitoring, this is Central Control. Stand by that video overload indicator. We're going to try it again. You ready, Susan? Ready. Screen on. I hope we're not too late. We're not, but there's no time to lose if we're going to get them out of there alive. What makes you even think they're in, in that time cold coordinate? Coordinate. So far, we haven't seen any sign of them. Just this futuristic holocaust. They're out there, Mr. Denning. How can you be so sure? You see, we're picking up this image from the lab's equipment. In other words, everything we see on this screen is identical to what Dr. Gordon and his crew see from the lab. Then, as long as this picture remains stable, that means they're intact? Yeah, that's basically correct, but we have no way of knowing if they're still inside the lab. Well, I doubt very much if they'd step out into that. Monitoring reports, they just picked up a change in the time selector settings from the lab. Does that mean they're coming back? Yeah, that's a good bet. Reset our time selector to the present. Re-establish video contact within the time vault. Time selector set at zero minus 5,000. We should be back in seconds after we left. I've tried to minimize any chance of us colliding with ourselves in time. We'll make it. Of course we will. And we'll bring back her warning. We will not. What makes you so sure? Well, isn't it obvious, Manning? The war did happen. We didn't get back without warning. Maybe we did. Maybe they just didn't listen. Sometimes people don't listen to warnings that might save them. But whether or not they must be something we can do, at least we can... Gentlemen, please. Carry. Laser beam pulse system go. The overload indicator shows that we've overloaded the laser's ruby. Could shatter if we're not careful. Does that mean we'll be trapped here? No, Stanton. Our lab may be set adrift, and we'd wander aimlessly through time and space like a ship at sea. All set, Doc. Standing by for time synchronization. Standing by. All right. Mark, activate time transport. Time transport activated. We should be back in the time vault in a few seconds. I wonder if... Doc, Karen, the screen. Something coming at us, and fast. Whatever it is, we're on a direct collision course. Laser beam pulse system increasing in strength, causing heavy static interference in video reception. All right, activate image stabilizer. Image stabilizer activated. It looks like they're coming back our way. Monitoring confirms. Dr. Gordon's time selector has been reset to the present. How long will that be before we see them? Well, I imagine just a matter of seconds, unless it takes longer to come back than it does to go. How accurately can they time their return? Within a few seconds of their original departure, they're safe if they return within 24 hours in either direction. But we're not taking any chances on losing them again. Stand by to attempt time lock-in on the lab as it passes through our time, plus or minus 24 hours. It looks as if we're not the only ones traveling in time. Collision course. The radio may not work, but it's our only chance. This is Dr. Manning. We are from the year 1968. We're traveling the time-space continuum on a direct course with you. Collision imminent. Unable to correct. Over. I repeat. Collision imminent. Unable to correct. Do you hear us? Please reply. The laser system. Perhaps we can fire a warning without overloading the laser. I set the discharge at 50%. Any more than that will destroy the other craft and our laser. Stand by for discharge. It worked. The discharge acted like an invisible barrier. It didn't work. They're going to crash, kill us all. I've got to stop. Stand to wait, you fool. You'll be murdering. Destroying everybody who's up there. Laser power surge from the lab. It's too much. Lock-in is impossible. They're going too fast. Release time locks. They're gone. What happened? Where did they go? 
Monitoring is still tracking the lab. They haven't stopped yet. Monitoring? This is central control. We made visual contact with the lab as it passed through our time. Our time selector indicates they are traveling along the space-time continuum into the past. We are standing by to reestablish visual contact. Please verify closest possible date. They must be completely out of control. No change in speed. They're still traveling.
One million years. One million years? B.C. Both of you go back to your planets. See that the settings remain as they are. I must have readings, otherwise... The laser system, the ruby's crack, it could shatter. I'm gonna take a look outside. You people do what you have to do. I'll let you know what it's like out there. Stanton, come back. The warp condition is unstable. It may collapse any second. The lab may move on. Come back, Stanton. If we move on, he'll be lost in time. Some lost. I'll go after him. Mark. No, Mark. I'll go after him. It's my responsibility. I'm still the senior here. Are you two get back to the panels? See to those settings and see that they stay as they are. Well, I think we've got to reprogram the circuits in our master control. Are you getting any video? Nothing on video. However, we are still maintaining a signal from the lab's laser pulse system, but it's... It's weak. Very weak. Could that be because of the great distance they've traveled? No, I'm afraid not. It's more likely a malfunction within their unit. The laser ruby. Is that serious? No, it could be if anything happened to it. You see, that ruby is the power source for the entire lab and the only link we have with them. Monitoring indicates the lab has come to a halt. And telemetry from the lab indicates the systems are very weak. The warp could collapse at any minute and the lab move on. Can they give us a time coordinate? No, they've dropped it in our labs. We have to locate and retrieve the lab. They consider the condition critical. All right, stand by to activate time screen. Standing by. Screen activated. Stand by to boost reception. This is central control. We're going to increase power input and attempt to get clear reception on the lab. All right, I'm going to boost power gradually. Almost just a little more. All right, we've got him. Now let's try and bring him back. Monitoring is standing by. Anytime you're ready. All right, lock in time coordinates. Time coordinates locked. Set the time selected present, plus or minus 24 hours. Time selector set. All right, I'm going to try to bring them back slowly. We're just holding them by a thread. If we have a burnout or a setting change in that lab or even ours, we'll short out all our circuits. You ready, Susan? Ready. All right, switch on. Input circuits. Well, that does it. All the systems are gone. There's nothing more we can do. We're still picking up the laser signal from the lab. At least they're still intact. She's right, Dave. That's something. Yeah, sure, that's something, but it may not be enough. That warp condition was unstable to begin with. The lab can move on at any time. Maybe hours before we can rewire and try again. Mark! Mark, what is it? Keep the warp open and watch the laser room. Central control. We've just lost a signal from the lab. Do you still hold a bearing on them? No bearing. The lab's gone. There has to be something we can do. We can't just leave them stranded, lost in time. We're not giving up yet. Not until I've rewired every circuit and checked out every system.
came after me and tried to attack the lab. He discharged the laser and the ruby shattered. And Mark, what are we going to do? Look. Let's head for those rocks. Try to lose it. Come on. Right over here, we can hold up in there. Come on. That was close. Too close. Doesn't sound as if it's going to let up. We'll just have to sit him out. Sit him out? Let's try to find another way out of here. All right. We've been wandering around for hours. Back on our own time now. Bob, Carter, come over here quickly. What do you think of this outcropping, Mark? Well, if it weren't for its enormous size, I'd say it was an emerald. A giant emerald. All right, and this? It is. And you know what it means? Uh, it means we're rich. Not at all, Stanton. These are worthless stones to us, unless we can find a ruby. One of the approximate size and weight to replace the one that was shattered in the laser unit. Come on. seen anything so beautiful, so majestic. Just hope the place has the ruby we need. This creature must be a lava pit. Intense heat and pressure found all these gems. This cavern must be in the center of a volcano. Take it easy, Stanton. No worry, I know what I'm doing. Look, you get what you want, I'll get what I want. Get away from there. Now listen, Dr. Gordon, you're not giving me any orders. This is not your expedition. It was an accident, an accident with my equipment and bought with my money. So I'll do as I damn well please.
got to stick together. Come on, Karen. Stanton, get away from us. now you know if we could step up the power input several points we might have reception yeah but i don't think these circuits will stand much more it's pretty makeshift now look the laser signal wait a minute monitoring reports they've picked up activity from the lab again it's moving in which direction back on a steady course towards the present Good. increase video power input two points activate image stabilizer you better cross your fingers and let's hope we don't overload this time all right, Susan, stand by to activate time lock-in. I'm ready. Lock-in activated. This is Dr. Manning. We are from the year 1968. We're traveling the time-space continuum on a direct course with you. Collision imminent. The laser system. Perhaps we can fire a warning without overloading the laser. It didn't work. They're going to crash. Kill us all. I've got to stop. Stand to wait. You'll be murdering, destroying everybody who's up there. Was that 
the lab? Well, it couldn't be. We're still getting a signal from the lab's laser beam system. Well, then what was it? I don't know. Monitoring confirmed it was not the lab. They're still picking up its bearing. The lab is stationary in its original position in the past, and telemetry indicates the systems are go. They can move ahead at any second. Good. We better watch these controls now. They may attempt transport again. Dave, the time lock system is dead. selected to return us to our own time. Plus or minus how many seconds? 30 seconds plus departure time. Here we go again. They're moving. All systems check, with the exception of the time lock. What if they overshoot again? Isn't there some way we can stop them? No, they'll have to hit their time mark on their own. Laser beam increasing. They should be coming through at any second. It worked. They hit their time lock. Yeah, but they're not locked in. They're still drifting and beyond the 24-hour mark. Calculations weren't exact enough. We've returned too far back in time. Why aren't we? Why aren't they moving? We've disrupted the time flow. We're existing in a world outside of time. A parallel world. Look, they are moving only so slowly that you can barely see it. We're existing at such an accelerated time rate. We'd be nothing more than shadows to them. Can't be two of us. Sooner or later, time will catch up with us, ourselves and our counterparts. What could happen? Two solid objects can't occupy the space of one. I don't know what would happen. We'd explode, implode. I don't know, but I think it we'd cease to exist. There's got to be a way out of this. There's a chance. What? After the time left. To what? And when? Come on, I don't know what. It's the only chance we've got to take it. Are you prepared to uh, demonstrate this uh, looking into the future for us now? No, not quite yet. Oh, I thought. Well, gentlemen, I'll take into consideration your request for funds, but I'll have to warn you. If you don't come up with anything more concrete than 24 hours, I'll be forced to shut down this section and convert it to weapons development. Good day. There's only one other thing we can try. Accelerate the laser beam cycling. Mark, we've never subjected the unit to such speed. It's a risk. I say take it. Now, wait a minute, Manning. You have no authority to make a decision as rash as that. That's a Gordon in charge of this project, not you. It may shatter the laser's ruby pop, or it may not. If it does, we're out of business. But if we don't get this damn thing working, we're out of business anyway. Very well. Oh, that's enough, Mark. 
What's the reading? What's the reading? I don't know. I don't know. It still accelerates, but the needle's glued to the top of the flash pulse indicator. No way of telling what our cycle speed is. Better decelerate. No, no, no. Wait, it could be the time transport calibrations. They may be off. Try moving the transport ahead. Hold it there. I'm going to open the photon cycling all the way. No, don't do that, Bob. Maybe the Adam and Eve of a brave new world. 